The video that was scheduled for this week was supposed to be on my top workout tips for beginner and intermediate lifters, but I felt compelled to share this story with you. You've got no one to impress. Let me say it one more time. You've got no one to impress. A couple days ago, I almost purchased a Tesla Model 3 and a lot of strange things happened in the process that I want to share with you. Before I do so, if you are regular on this channel, remember to hit the like button on this video. And if you're new or haven't done so yet, please smash that subscribe button for me. I appreciate the support. Also, if you want to learn the top three lessons I've learned throughout this entire experience, make sure you stick until the end of this video. Okay, enough said now. Let's cue the intro. So a couple days ago, I almost purchased a Tesla Model 3. Now, before I jump into the whole story, it's only fair that I give you a little historical background. I've been driving my 2004 Saturn View since college and it's gotten a little rough over the past three years I've owned it. Those who know me will testify to this. I have a tendency to buy high quality products and squeeze all the juice out of them. For instance, here's a pair of my old running shoes. The Nike is over here and I've worn them for about three years until they had holes in them as you can see. And uh, I went ahead and purchased a new pair of Nikes. Hopefully for the next three years, who knows? The same goes for my laptops. Here's my old laptop, my Asus. Uh, here you go, not in great shape. I've had that for about three to four years and I've used it until it died on me. Then I went ahead and purchased my new laptop, which is my Microsoft Surface over here. And the same goes for my phone. And I won't get into all the boring details again. But if you notice, there's a pattern I follow. When it comes to me to purchase a new item, I invest heavily into it. And I squeeze all the juice out of it until I can't anymore. Then I make another heavy investment onto the next one. I've personally never been interested in pleasing or impressing anyone but myself. And when it comes to purchases in general, I always want to buy the best available item that I can afford at the time of the purchase. And then I use it until it dies on me, then I make another heavy investment and then the cycle continues. Back to the car story now that you have a little historical background. Like I said, I've been driving my now 15 year old car for some time now and it's a screamer as my friend Slitter would say. So I thought to myself, it's probably time to upgrade. Why Tesla, you might ask? Well, I've been an admirer of the company for quite some time now, especially the man behind it, Elon Musk. I've read his whole biography, listened to dozens of hours of his tapes, the whole nine yards, you already know. Most importantly though, I love Tesla cars for two main reasons, simplicity and technology. And even though I work in the oil and gas industry, I love what the company stands for. Don't tell anybody I say that. I thought it was time for action now. I did some serious homework on the car, evaluated the finances, everything looked good. I then proceeded to schedule a test drive and let me tell you, this car is about 15 years into the future. The autopilot feature, the insane automation, the comfort, the silent ride. I was transported into another universe for a moment. All along during that time of me organizing the purchase, a couple of strange coincidental things happened. Number one, the dream. One night around that period, I met Jeff Bezos. In my dream, of course. And he was riding around in an old Toyota Camry, probably from 1984 or something. It looked very similar to this. And the dream kept on looping on the same image of Bezos cruising in that old car. When I woke up, I thought it was quite a strange dream. Coincidentally though, the day after I had an appointment with my company's 401k investment advisor, let's call him Paul to protect his privacy. Shout out to you Paul by the way, Paul is the man, let me tell you that. So anyways, I shared my intention to purchase a new car with Paul and uh, upon evaluation of the overall situation, he paused and asked me, does your car still drive? I replied, yes it does. Then he retorted and keep driving it around until you can't anymore. I thought to myself, wait a minute, 
But that advice resonated with me for one simple reason. It's been my whole life philosophy this entire time. For some reason, when it came to the Tesla, I just kind of lost it. And I was probably way too excited because it was a Tesla. But this brings us to the first and most valuable lesson of this whole story. Make the most of what you currently have until you can't anymore. Then, only then, upgrade to the best available item in that category. The day after my meeting with Paul, he sent me a link to an article about the now 2019 NBA Finals MVP, Kawhi Leonard, on how he was still driving his 1997 Chevy Tahoe as a millionaire professional athlete. Nah, that really hit home with me. And it brings me to the second lesson of this story. The only person you have to impress is yourself. Who cares about the latest iPhones, the latest Jordans, the latest MacBooks? They make a new one every year anyway. Stick with whatever you have until you physically can't anymore. Now you better believe that as soon as my 15 year old Saturn view gives up on me, I'm heading straight to the Tesla dealership for my Model 3. It might be 5 weeks from now, it might be 5 years from now, but who really cares? In the meantime, I'll be saving up the money and investing it smartly and managing it correctly. And that's the third and final lesson of the story. Do not hesitate to reward yourself for your hard work and delayed gratification with the best you can possibly afford. It's nothing but positive reinforcement for yourself. Now I know for sure, some of you might be asking yourselves, how in the world is this kid able to afford a Tesla Model 3? Fair enough question, I've got great news for you though, but first remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and also remember to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And if you're still curious, tune into my next video where I share my personal budgeting tips tailored specifically for millennials whether you are in school or in the workforce. Alright, let's now wrap up the video with a quick recap of all the lessons we've learned throughout this story. When it comes to purchasing new items for yourself, remember this. Number one, you have no one to impress. Number two, make the most of what you currently own until you can't anymore. Then, upgrade. And number three, whenever you upgrade, make sure you buy the best available item at the time of the purchase that you can afford. Then, squeeze all the juice out of it until you can't anymore for as many years as it takes. In the meantime, Save some money and manage it smartly and make some smart investments to let the money grow. This was Guess for your weekly dose of smart millennial motivation on guestivation. Peace.